All right, so I'm gonna show how to replace the screen on this 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro model A2141. All right, so you're going to need a Pentalobe 0.8 or P2 screwdriver, a Pentalobe or P5, uh, Pentalobe 1.2 or P5 screwdriver. You'll also need a Torx T3, a Torx T5, and a Torx T8. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and remove all the screws from the bottom using the Pentalobe um, 1.2 or P5 screwdriver. You do wanna keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shapes, and lengths. The way I do that is I just place them on my desk with the flat side down in the pattern that I remove them. All right, so that's how I keep track of them. Okay, so you see two towards the back where the hinge are. So we'll do that, and then you got four here, so we'll remove those four and put those in a row as well. Okay. So to remove the bottom cover, it helps to have a suction cup. You can also use tape if you don't have a suction cup. Or on this model, because there's the air vents, you can use that to kind of help pull the cover up. So I'll show you that in a bit. All right. So if you don't have a suction cup, um, the way you do it with tape, if you have good packaging tape, you just stick two pieces of tape together like that, and then you have the excess go down and stick on like that. So that way the tape will meet like this, and you'll have a pull tab to pull the cover up. All right, anyways, once you got all the screws out, here's how you do it. If you don't have a suction cup or tape, you can get in the little air vent side here, and then you can kind of pry that up. And once you pull this up, you can actually get underneath the cover here. Okay. And then once you get underneath the cover, you can slide your fingernails or pry tool down the side and then push the bottom down while pulling up on the side and you can pop the clip out from here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and go down to the other side. You don't wanna pull up too far because the back here has some sliding clips. So we're just gonna go along the side and then pop that clip as well. Right, once you pop both those clips open, you're gonna flip the computer over while having it up like this. You're gonna hold this computer up with your fingers. Use one finger to push down on the edge here. Pull the cover forward, grab it like this. So we're just grabbing on the cover and then pull the cover down while pushing with your finger here. All right, so you're just gonna pull it really hard. Okay, and it will slide down like that. It's pretty tough. You do have to use quite a bit of force. We're gonna go ahead and do this on the other side, grabbing the panel, wrapping your fingers over, and then pushing down this piece as you pull. All right, just like that. All right, so once you pull both sides out, you can go ahead and lift the cover off slowly, just like this. It's a little dusty, not too bad. I'll clean it off. Um, but yeah, now after we get that, so I'm gonna clean this off. I just use a toothbrush and brush the dust off. Okay, just like that, clean that up. All right, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna disconnect the battery. So to do that, let me zoom in and make it a little bit easier to see. Okay, so there's this plastic cover here. We're just gonna slowly lift this up, okay? You wanna gently pull it up. You don't wanna yank it too quickly. Just go along there and then slide your fingers over and then pull this up just like that. Okay, slowly. And there we go, so we got this little cover off. All right, we'll just set that aside. All right, so next we're going to disconnect the battery here. So to disconnect the battery, there's this plastic little tab here. We're gonna lift up first to get it out of the way. Right, just hold that little tab out of the way. Okay, and then underneath you'll see this little latch. We're gonna flip that latch up. I just used my fingernail, all right, just like that. Once you flip that up, you can go ahead, go underneath this cable, grab that cable, and then just pull it back, just like this. So now we disconnected part of the battery. We're gonna disconnect this connector um, that's held in place with a Torx T5 screw. So we're gonna switch to our T5 screwdriver bit, and we're just gonna remove that one screw. All right, and we'll set that aside. Once you remove that screw, what you're gonna wanna do, um, if you notice, this little piece here is touching this board. 
So what we're going to do is get underneath with a plastic pry tool or I just use my fingernail and we're just going to bend that up slightly. So now you can see this metal tab stays out of the way. The golden contacts under there are what connect the battery to the rest of the computer. All right, so once we've disconnected the battery, again, I'm only going to be doing a screen replacement um, for this. Uh, once you do that, you're going to open up the screen and then press and hold the power button for 10 to 15 seconds. All right, this will drain any power. Um, this is very important when replacing the screens. If you don't do this, there's a very good chance that you can actually short out the connection on the board. All right, so just hold this for a few more seconds. There we go. All right. So now what we're going to do, we're going to remove all the connectors up here. So we're going to switch over to a T3 or Torx 3 screwdriver. And we're going to remove the two screws holding this uh, plastic cover down. All right, there's two screws on each side. So we're going to remove these two screws for this plastic cover. Again, you want to keep all the screws in order because they are different size, shapes, and lengths. If you do mix them up, you can damage your computer. All right. So remove those two screws. Let me zoom in a little bit to make this easier for you to see. Okay. Once you remove those two screws, you can grab the edge of this. Sorry, it's shaking. And then you can lift that up. Once you lift that up, you can pull it back just like that. And we'll do this same thing on this side. All right. Remove the two screws. <clears throat> just like this be careful because there's a little cable going under here all right so we got those two screws out once you get those two screws same thing lift this up slightly and then wiggle and pull it back all right be careful because there are cables under there so there is a cable going under here we're gonna have to be careful I'm not too sure what that cable is 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 that part of the screen hinge hmm okay it looks like it's going over the hinge assembly so i'm gonna have to be careful with that i don't know if that actually is part of the hinge or not sorry but as you can see there's a little thing there okay so <clears throat> what we're going to do now um, let's see. So the replacement screen I have, it has these metal brackets already on it. So I'm going to leave those there. Um, but we are going to have to remove these two that hold this spring loaded bracket, these two, and then we're going to remove the four that are holding this screen cable connector in place. All right. So let's remove the screen cable connector screws first. There's four screws, All right? One, two, and these are all using the T3 or Torx 3 screwdriver. All right, once you remove those two screws, you can lift this metal plate out of the way. Okay, just like that. Set it aside, and then we got the two screws here holding the rest of the cable down with a bracket. <clears throat> Oops. Okay, the screw, these two screws are a lot longer, so keep that in mind. All right, got those two screws out. We'll remove this metal bracket as well. Then to disconnect the cable, I just use my fingernail underneath. Again, you can use a plastic pry tool. You don't want to use something metal. And then just pop it up just like that. All right, move that cable out of the way. Don't bend it back too far or you can damage it. All right, then we got the two screws hidden down here. We'll get those two out. Two on each side. These are also pretty long. Okay. <clears throat> Why is it not coming out? Come on. Hmm. This screw's stuck. There we go. Alright, and then we'll get the two on this side. hard working on it with the laptop kind of away from me. Normally uh, you would look over the top so you can see what you're unscrewing. Okay, so I have to tilt the laptop to make it easier for me to see. <clears throat> all right, so now we got all those screws out. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the screws that go along here. These are pentalobe 
um, P.2 or P2 or pentalobe 0 0.8. All right, so we're going to remove all of these. Again, keep them in order. Okay, there's a lot of these screws. <clears throat> Hopefully you're able to um, follow along and keep up. If not, just pause the video as you go if you're getting stuck. Same thing on the other side. Just continue removing all these screws. I'm not sure what that cable is over there, but it is also held in place with a P2 or pentalobe 0 0.8 screw. So we are going to remove that one as well. Okay. Now that we got all of the antenna screws out, we are going to remove the one over here. I'm not sure if it needs to be removed, but it's here. It looks like it's in the way of the hinge, so I'm just going to remove it. Okay, so I'm not sure what that's holding in place. Let me take a quick look. can't really see from here. Um, I'm not sure what that's holding, but here you go. There's this little piece here. So you want to make sure to remove this because if you don't and you pop out this hinge, you can actually tear this cable. Okay. <clears throat> you can either remove it from this side or just remove it from this side. Okay. So now we're going to remove the last few screws and these are Torx T5 screws. Okay. So we're gonna disconnect the wireless antenna connector there. So Apple started putting a lot of weird stuff. So this is the fan connector it looks like. And they're actually hiding the wireless antennas underneath a piece of um, thermal adhesive. Okay, so we're gonna peel, I peeled this up. We're gonna hold that out of the way. We're gonna take this one T5 or Torx 5 screw out. Okay. And then you got four T5 screws up here, I believe, if it's like the other model. And yes, it is. So we're going to remove the four T5 screws up here as well. Okay, one, two, three. Sorry, my head's getting in the way. And last one. All right, so now this board is free. Here you can see. All right, we are going to have to pull out the wireless antennas. So to remove the wireless antennas, you can use a plastic pry tool or tweezers. You just want to be careful not to damage the board. I just get my fingernails underneath, and at the tail, I just pop it up just like that. All right, we're going to go again <clears throat> for all three. Just get underneath the tail like this, and then pop it up. All right. You might have to, this one is kind of like twisted in on itself. 
so I might have to kind of move it over a little bit. All right, and then just go from the tail, just like that. Okay, and the last one over here, same thing. Go from the tail and pull it up. There we go. So now we got all three antennas out. Okay, so to remove the wireless antenna, let me zoom out. <clears throat> so I there's the little air vents here. I use that as a way to lift it up, right? Work my way towards the center and then keep going over. And same thing with this side. And then you kind of just wiggle and pull it up. And there we go. So now we got the wireless antenna released. We're going to go ahead and guide these parts through here. You might need some tweezers to be able to easily pull this back up. So I'll show you when I go ahead and put it back together. You can use like tweezers or a little needle, um, but it works best with tweezers. All right, so here we go. That's the wireless antenna board. Set that aside. <clears throat> now we're going to go ahead and switch to the T8 or Torx 8 screwdriver bit. Let me zoom out a bit. So this part to remove the screen, what I like to do is open the screen all the way out. Okay. Just like this, we're gonna go ahead, flip the MacBook over and hang the screen off the edge of the desk. I use my legs to kind of hold this in place. So here you can see I have the screen hanging off the desk and my legs are actually holding it up. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to remove the three screws on each hinge. <clears throat> Again, hopefully you guys are keeping all the screws in order. All right, two, and three. Same thing with the other side, remove those three screws. And then when we lift out the screen, you wanna be careful with that cable there, okay? And I also like to add some red thread locker um, to hold the screws in place when I put the new screen. So I'll show you that in a bit. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we got all six screws out. What we're going to do now is let the screen fall to about 90 degrees and then slowly lift out the screen. Again, you want to be careful with that cable on that side there. Okay, there we go. And then got all these cables. They come out as well. We'll set that screen aside. <clears throat> all right, let's grab the replacement. So the re replacement looks like this has all this stuff stuck on top. I'm gonna peel this off, okay? So just like this, peel this stuff up. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna have to check, but let's peel, let's pull these things out. Okay, so all these screen protector things I can take out after it looks like. All right. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to peel this piece so it's no longer on the bottom of the screen. There we go. Okay. And then if your screen hinges are folded over, to fold them open, what you want to do, just take your T8 screwdriver, stick them through. You don't want to let it drop too far because then you'll hit the screen with the screwdriver. But just do that, and then you can use that to rotate the hinge. Okay. Same thing with the other side. Just get the screwdriver in there, and then use that to rotate the hinge. Okay, <clears throat> now that we got that, what you're going to want to do, make sure to grab the screen cables and everything, pull them up and away from the screen like this, and then slowly drop it into place. I like to do the left side first just to kind of get it away from that cable over there. Okay, so I slid that in first, and then we're going to slowly drop the right side down. Okay, then you can drop all these little connectors in as well. Make sure this cable ends up on top. <clears throat> then I'm going to lift the screen up with my legs again, holding it into place. And then I'll take the two most center screws towards the hinges. All right. And we'll just lightly tighten those into place. Same thing with the other one. And I'm just lightly tightening it i'm not tightening it too hard all right so once you got those two screws in you're going to carefully lift the macbook up 
I have it on the thing on my desk like that, and then I slowly close the screen. Right? You want to do this slowly so you don't accidentally scrape or get anything caught. All right? And, oh, I forgot about that. <clears throat> so I'm going to open this back up. This foam is kind of in the way, so I need to peel that off. Okay, I guess I can peel the whole screen protector, but, oh, okay, the foam is coming out by itself. So I'm going to peel just the foam out. We'll leave this in there just to keep it safe for now. All right, so I peeled that out. I don't know if all the used screens will come with that. Most, most likely it won't. <clears throat> all right, we're going to flip this back over. <clears throat> Then what you want to do, let's zoom in a little bit, okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to loosen this screw a little bit here. Sorry for the shaking. And the reason I'm loosening this is so that I can make sure that these are completely aligned. So I like to align, oops, let me zoom out. I like to align the corners by using two fingers on each side like this and just pushing it to make sure everything is lined up, okay. So it can shift a little. You want to kind of make sure to check the gaps here where the screen meets the um, bezel and try and get that as centered as possible. You want the gaps to be even, all right? So that way when you open and close it, it's not going to scrape on anything. Okay, just like that. <clears throat> Once you get it even, you can go ahead and tighten down these screws. And these will hold it all in place. Oops. I messed up the alignment a little bit. There we go. Okay. Check the alignment. Make sure that this back end is flush. There we go. Tighten that into place. <clears throat> Okay, once you got those two tightened in place, it's going to hold itself together. So I'm going to get the thread locker here. All right, let me clean off the thing so it doesn't have any dried up thread locker there. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the screws one by one. Let me zoom in. Okay, and we'll just add a little bit of the thread locker on there. Okay, we'll go ahead and put that screw into place, tighten it down, grab the next screw, same thing, add a little bit of thread locker, okay, tighten that into place, <clears throat> we can go ahead and take this screw back out so we can add some thread locker to that as well, okay. Go ahead and grab the other screw, add some thread locker, okay. tighten that down, other screw, add some more thread locker, <clears throat> tighten that down, we'll pull this screw back out. All right, add the thread locker there as well. Close that up. All right, so now we got all the hinge screws back in. We're gonna put away the T8 screwdriver because we're done with that. Let's rotate this back around. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and try and well, we can put these two screws back in first because these are a little bit tricky. So let's switch to the T8, oops, the T3 screwdriver, sorry. That's what happens when you're in lack of sleep. Okay, so T3 screwdriver. Grab this. Make sure that you rotate it the right way. Let me zoom in so you can kind of see. All right. So here you can see this spring-loaded piece. We're going to have to rotate it so that these two things face up the right way. If you want, you can put the screw in there. Oops, okay, this is gonna be tough because I have to lean my head over so I can see. All right, so tip that up, make sure it's twisted the right way. Get the screw in there. 
right, and tighten that into place. <clears throat> Hopefully that's going in. I can't tell. I think it is. All right, there we go. All right, grab the other screw. <clears throat> Same thing. Make sure to get that out of the way. All right. There we go. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Get that screw in. All right. Same thing with the other side. Grab the screw. Rotate this. Uh, oops. Sorry. Grab that. Rotate it. Make sure it stays in place. Right, get the screw in. Make sure you hold that piece into place. There go. A screw. Tighten that as well. All right, so now we got both of those or all four of those screws in place. Make sure that this connector ends up on top. It's going underneath. All right, so make sure to get it on top. All right, so now <clears throat> to make things a little easier, I'm gonna switch back to the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. We're gonna go ahead and try and guide the antennas here through the little hole down here. So it goes underneath this. Okay, so guide that through. So here you can see the antenna wires are going that way. It helps to kind of like bend the wires so that they're all like going the same direction. So try and straighten them all out like at this bend point, okay? Then we're gonna go ahead and thread the antenna wires through just like this. Okay, can be a little tricky. Again, it does help to use some tweezers. So I have these tweezers here so you can kind of help guide those wires in okay help just help guide them a little bit it is a little tricky because we have to get this metal loop thing around there too then when you get past you're gonna have to pull the antenna wire up so it clears the board here okay slowly kind of wiggle it as you push it through you'll see the next antenna wire kind of have to just grab it and pull it up as well okay just like that slowly guiding them through next antenna wire there it's going underneath try and grab that out as well okay it helps to have good tweezers these are some kind of expensive tweezers but here we go all right and then lift up this metal screw mount as well here we go Okay, so now that we got all those antennas over there, what we're going to do is try and get this lined up. You do have to kind of hold it up while you're kind of lining it up. If you do this wrong, you can bend the thing and then you're going to have to take it out and unbend it. But anyways, get that all lined up. Just like that. Once you get, oops, let me zoom out. Once you get the screw holes here and here lined up, then you know that it's good. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay, get those lined up and then you can go ahead and push the middle piece down so you know that you did it right if you try and lift this and it kind of holds itself in place all right there we go <clears throat> so now you're going to want to be careful with this little piece as well we're going to rotate oops let me zoom out so now we're going to have to make sure rotate this a little bit get that tucked back under there and get that little piece lined up again. All right. Okay, so I switched to the T5 screwdriver, so we're gonna actually put these screws back in first. All right, so we got the antenna mount screwdriver, screw, sorry. I'm gonna get that into place. You do want to have this kind of pulled over a little bit to center it. All right, there we go, tighten that. Now we're going to put the four screws back here that hold this board down in place. Let's see here. It's hard to see. So I'm going to just loosely fit it first. Okay. So that way I can get everything else aligned. 
Get this screw in. Oh, why is my screwdriver popping out? Okay, let me make sure it's completely aligned. It's hard to see from this angle. Okay, get that screw in. All right, I don't think it's aligned right, so I'm gonna have to redo that one, but let's go ahead and get the rest. All right, that one in, and last screw. Okay, so what I like to do when I put these screws in, I like to try and get the, the golden ring centered with the screw, and then tighten the screw down, okay. go then we'll go ahead on the other side here it did move a little so let me loosen these screws a little this one's kind of weird so I might have to do that one last okay there we go all right so get that lined up tighten that down there we go go ahead and look at the other side get that tightened down all right, and then we're going to tighten these last two in the center, and this one, sorry, my head's getting in the way again. All right, so we got all the T5 screws except for the one for the battery, so we're going to set that aside for now. We'll switch to the Pentalobe 0 0.8 or P2, and let's put back in that weird one that's in the middle of nowhere. Oh. I dropped that screw. It's, there we go. Okay, so it looks like that one screw isn't magnetic, so we're going to have to be careful putting this one back in. Apple's up to their tricks again. Okay, let's zoom in. All right, so we're going to put this one screw in here, but again, it's not magnetic for some reason, so I'm going to have to hold it in place while I kind of drop it in. Oh. Apple's got to make things difficult all the time. All right, so I'm going to have to use the tweezers now to get that out. Sorry, my head's going to get in the way because that's the only way I can kind of see what I'm doing. All right. Uh, where did I drop it? Sorry, my head's going in the way again. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay, I'm going to use the tweezers like this just to hold the screw. And then we're going to get the screwdriver in place. Get that, and there we go. Okay, I can tighten that into place now. There we go. Apple up to their tricks as usual. Alright, I should be done with the tweezers for now. Set those aside. And now we're going to go ahead and put these screws in. So the way I like to do these, <clears throat> I like to put the one on the edge first here. So hold, holding the antenna as close as I can to the slot where it should be. Tighten it in place. Get the other screw from the other end. Hold that in place as well. And then tighten that down. So I like to always turn it backwards first just to feel it fall into the groove. All right, and then we'll tighten it down. Now that we got the two edge, you can let go, and then we'll just put back the rest of those screws. If you want to be extra sure, you can hold it down and put the center ones, but usually once you get the two outer ones, it's good enough. All right, just like that. And you want to be careful with these screws because they are super tiny. So if you over tighten them, you could easily strip the screws. Okay, so you want to be careful with these. Just loose finger tight loosely. You don't want to like put too much force behind it. All right, there we go. All 
a screw for this side of the antenna. There we go. All right, now we do the last side here. Same thing, hold the antenna in place. First screw in. All right, other side. Hold the antenna in place, screw it in. Right, and now we'll just put the rest of the screws in. Just like that. We're almost there. more to go. Alright, so we got all the wireless antenna screws in. Let's go ahead and actually pop in the wireless antennas now. So these, you just gotta make sure you get them lined up properly. So the way I do that is I just move them around. Once they're lined up properly, if you kind of run your fingernail over the top or your finger, you'll see it stays into place. Then you just push it down just like that. All right, just do this with all three. Okay, you wanna be careful because you don't wanna push it down if it's not in place or you could easily damage these. Okay, go. Last antenna. Sometimes you have to move them forward, especially since we straightened out the wires. Okay. Go. Okay, all three antennas in place. Make sure that they're all lying next to each other and then we can go ahead and pull this back over okay just like that all right so now we're going to reconnect this this connector sometimes you might have to move it a little bit so let me see if i can show this so sometimes i have to kind of like pull it back a little bit this way while i'm pushing it down okay so it's hard to show this in camera but let's see if i can do it completely this way okay so you want to make sure everything is lined up okay it's a little bit too far forward all right it's a little bit tricky finding the proper alignment there we go all right once you get it lined up oops just push it back down should hold itself in place pretty well. All right, make sure you're still, oops, make sure you switch back to the Torx 3 or T3 screwdriver. We're gonna go ahead and put this first. Sometimes it helps to get the screwdriver and hold the screw in like this while you're holding this metal bracket so that you can use this to kind of as a guide, all right? But uh, yeah, if you can just do it like this, then you can do that. But again, it helps to use this metal bracket as a guide. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put the other screw. I just loosely fit the screw for now. So that way I can move this around. Here we go. Once you get both of them in, just hold that bracket into place and then tighten it down. All right, tighten the other screw down. Right now we'll get the bracket for the connector. All right, 
again using the same technique holding this bracket and then doing that to use it to align the screw there we go the second screw screw into place tighten it down there we go all right, so now we just got to put the little plastic hinge covers back in place. All right, just like this. Tilt it up like before when we pulled it out. Okay, get that lined up. All right, and then drop it into place. Get the screws. All right, there we go. Second screw. go make sure they're both tightened properly okay make sure that the plastic is underneath the metal part here okay I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side same thing all right get the screw in there we go last one Alright, so we're done with the P2, or sorry, the, the Torx 3 or T3 screws. So we'll set that aside. We're also done with the P2 or Pentalope 0.8 screws, so we'll put that away. And now we're going to reconnect the battery. Alright, so we'll go back to the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. Take that screw. Make sure that this thing, when you moved it up and down, that it stays aligned. You'll know it's aligned because you can actually see the gold pads in the middle of here. If you see only one gold pad, then it's not aligned properly, okay? So if that's the case, you might have to pull the metal bracket over or pull it back. Okay, so tighten that screw in. All right, once you get that screw in, we're going to get the cable. Make sure that you peel the plastic piece back away from the connector, okay? All right, and then using that, we'll guide this cable in. Sorry, I know my thumb's in the way. Let me see if I can tilt it up like this. Okay, get that cable in. Use that plastic tab to help pull it, just like that. And then while you're pulling this over, slide your finger over this piece. There you go, to put that latch back down. Okay, just like that. If you want, you can go ahead and clean the dust out of here. There isn't much dust in this laptop, okay? So we're done with the T5 screwdriver now. Okay, put that away. We'll switch back to the Pentalobe or P5 or Pentalobe 1.2. Okay, so to put this cover back on, um, it's a little bit tricky. You start all, you start with it slightly down, okay? And then what you wanna do is you wanna hold on to this, like putting pressure down and slide that into place. Then go to the other side, same thing, holding this in place, slide that up. Make sure that the edges here clear the metal of the laptop, the bezel, okay? And then you wanna go again, push this side up. I use my thumb here on this cover to help push it up while I'm kind of pushing down here and do that one more time. All right, once you make sure everything is flush all around, just go ahead and push on the sides, push in the center, and there we go. So I'm gonna test it first before I put back the screws just in case it doesn't work properly. So we're gonna open this up. Okay, most likely we're going to have to plug it in. You can tell because if you press on the trackpad, it's not clicking. I'll push the power button. It's still not clicking. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug the MacBook in. So just get your charger. All right, plug this in and then see if you can click it. Still not, oh there, now the mouse pad is clicking. I can feel it and that means it should be turning on. So on these, you don't actually even have to press the power button, but there we go. I heard the chime and I see the apple. 
So it's already better than before. Before there was a huge line down the middle and it was all flickering, but now it looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and peel this thing off. Okay. And wait, we'll wait for it to boot up. I don't know if it's gonna show my customer's information. It does, so I'm gonna have to cover that up and I will show you that the screen is working. So here we go. Oops, I showed part of the name. <laughs> There you go, so the screen is good. It's working. All right, we're gonna shut it down. If you want, you can test, make sure the brightness controls are working, make sure the um, keyboard backlight's working. You do have to cover the camera to change the keyboard backlight settings because if it thinks that the room is really bright, then it's not gonna let you adjust it. Check the volume, it's working. And then the other thing I like to do after, um, changing any major hardware components is a PRAM and SMC reset. I don't know if the SMC reset will work, but let's try it. So usually it's control option shift on the left side and then the power button and it didn't work. So we're just not gonna do the SMC reset, we'll do the PRAM reset. So to do the PRAM reset when the computer's off or while you're rebooting. So let me see if I can show this. So the screen's off right now. So what you do is you press the power button and then immediately after you do command option PNR, press and hold it. You'll see the screen come on or you'll hear the chime. The computer should restart itself. So you saw it went off and then it should chime a second time after you let go. So after it goes off, you can let go of the buttons and then it should start itself up and chime a second time. So let's wait for it. Come on, there we go. So that's how you know you did a PRAM reset properly. And yep, now it's all starting up again. So that's pretty much it. We are going to just put back the screws. Again, you wanna test also, unplug it, make sure it stays on so it is staying on. So we are good to go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put back the rest of the screws and then peel off the other protective coating. But that's pretty much all there is to it. So yeah, you're welcome to stay while I put back the rest of the screws. I'm gonna close this, we'll peel this off just so we can see this nice new bezel. There we go, wipe off the little circle that that thing made. Oh, I guess it's permanently on there. I'm gonna have to use some rubbing alcohol to get that little circular mark out. Okay, so if, yours, if your screen has that kind of residue left on it, just get some rubbing alcohol on a piece of paper towel and then you can clean it off just like that. And yep, the circle's gone. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna flip this back over. I'm gonna actually put this plastic here just so it doesn't get all scratched up on my desk. Though my desk shouldn't scratch it up unless there's some weird crumbs there or something. But anyways, we're gonna put back the Pentalobe 0 or 1.2 or P5 screws. Got the longer screws towards the back here. All right, and then we got the short ones at the front. But that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, please like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can also see how to fix their computers. If they don't care about computers, I do have other random videos on my channel, uh, even like non-computer related things. So yeah, share my channel, help my channel grow, help others learn from my repair videos and thank you for watching i'll see you all in the next one all right bye